My name is Samantha Sands, and I am with the Denver Metro Regional Science and Engineering Fair. In this video, I am going to help you prepare for your science fair video presentation. This year, you will have three presentation components to prepare. Your digital poster presentation, your short two to three minute video about your science fair project, and your judge interview. While all of these presentations are about your science fair project, preparing for them might be a little bit different. So in this video, we're going to help you prepare for your own video. Science communication is a very important skill for any scientist. You make your science relevant and accessible by the way you present it. This video gives you the opportunity to display your best science communication skills. So take the time to plan and prepare for your video presentation. Before we get into the details of how to prepare for and produce your video, let's talk about what is required. You are going to create and submit a video that is no more than three minutes in length. You will use this video to summarize your project. You may use props or visuals in your video, as long as you follow all display and safety guidelines, just like you do for your poster presentation. Students are the only individuals who can appear in the video. And if you are on a team, make sure that all team members are included in the video, but the maximum video length of no more than three minutes remains the same. Your video must be uploaded to YouTube and you will upload the link to our virtual fair showcase. You can learn more about these specific requirements, including details on how to upload your video to YouTube in the full materials guide posted on the student tab of our website. Now that we know the requirements, let's dive into how to best prepare your video presentation. The first step in preparing for any public speaking is to know your audience. For the video presentation, your audience will include the judges, but also your peers, parents, teachers, etc. In science communication, we would say this audience is the general public. A lot of different people will be visiting our virtual science fair this year and watching the short videos about your projects. It is important that your video is a brief introduction to your project that will be easily understandable to all of these audiences. Now that we have identified your audience, let's talk about your message. For your short video, you are going to give a brief introduction to your project and want to entice your audience to learn more. Think of this video as people walking by your project and you want to get them to stop and learn more. You may have also heard of this referred to as an elevator pitch. Your presentation should look like a story and have a beginning, middle, and an end. The beginning should include an introduction of who you are and what your project is about. You do not need to read your project title. The middle is a description of your project. What did you do and what were your results? And the conclusion should thank your viewers for watching and invite them to learn more about your project by viewing your poster. Maybe even include a specific mention of something you want them to take notice of in your poster, like a figure, chart, or data table. After identifying your audience and your message, it is time to prepare your presentation. Write out a script or an outline for your presentation. Sometimes it helps to record yourself talking about your project first and then write your script. But be yourself and make sure to write in your own words. Also, remember to avoid science jargon. Just because words sound cool, like I was studying the fossilized exoskeleton of my elder drops run a trilobite. Jargon and overly complicated terms can be very off-putting to your audience and possibly even misleading. If you need to use a scientific term that is not common to a general audience, be sure to explain it briefly. Almost all science jargon can be explained in a simpler way. So let me rephrase my previous example in simpler terms. I could say, I was studying the tail end of a fossil trilobite or an ancient marine arthropod. Then practice, practice, practice your presentation. I practice presentations in the mirror, driving in the car, or even record myself on my computer. The more you practice, the more comfortable you will be in your video. And get feedback on your presentation as well. Have your grown-ups, your friends, your neighbors, or even staff here at the science fair watch your practice presentation and give you feedback. This is not meant to criticize you or tell you what you did wrong, but rather to be constructive and help you be the best science communicator you can be. I know it can be hard to receive feedback that isn't always positive, but know that even the best science communicators today still have people review their work before the public sees it. 
Now that you have perfected your presentation, record it. You can use your smartphone, a tablet, camera, or a computer to record your presentation. It does not need to be fancy, but you do want to make sure the video is easy for the audience to watch and the audio is clear and easy to hear. Record your video in a landscape orientation so it is best formatted for a computer screen. And keep the camera still by using a tripod or a stand. Think about the setting for your video. Do you have good lighting? Is it easy to see you and any visuals you may have? Is there anything in the background of the video that may distract your audience, like a TV that is turned on or a dog that's running around? It may feel uncomfortable or awkward to talk to a camera, but think of your audience sitting right where your camera is. Talk to the camera and make good eye contact, just like you would if your audience was sitting right there. This will make your audience feel like you are right there with them and your presentation will be more engaging. You may want to record several takes and choose your best version or pick the best clips and use some video editing software like iMovie or Canva to stitch the clips together. You could even record the presentation as short individual clips of 30 seconds or less and then combine them into one video. A few other tips to remember. Smile. It doesn't have to be a big cheesy grin. Just a little smile will be enough to show your audience that you mean what you are saying. And speak clearly and loudly. It can be easy to speak in a softer voice when you're alone in a room, but talk to the camera as if a person was standing three feet away from you and make sure to project your voice. Dress professionally, just like you would for the in-person fair. Remember, the judges are watching these videos before your interview and all three components of your presentation, your poster, your video, and your interview will be assessed by the judges. And be yourself. This is your project. Be proud of it. We're very proud of you. And be excited. Your enthusiasm is contagious. We are excited to see all of your projects and presentations. You are great scientists and improving your science communication skills will not only help you convey your science, but also make you a stronger scientist. Sir Mark Walport, the UK government chief and scientific advisor says, science isn't finished until it's communicated. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for our next video on how to prepare for your judge interview. To find past video and other helpful resources, visit our website. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Denver Science Fair at ucdenver.edu or join any of our events throughout the year.